Today in my workshop I'm working on a few different projects, one of which is restoring these nickel cadmium drill batteries. The first step in restoring them was hitting their terminals with some extremely high current power, which basically shocks the crystals that are shorting out the battery and allows it to come back to life. Now I'm charging it with my power supply at 18 volts. And I'm giving it just about a quarter of an amp of current to charge up to full power. I'm doing this for a go-kart build that I'll have coming up, which I need batteries for. Another project I've been working on recently is building electromagnets. I've got these in mind for a project soon, uh, and the first step in making them is finding some wire. You can get wire from a lot of different places, but a really easy to place to find a lot of wire is in motors. This is a small shaded pole motor. I got this out of a microwave. It would have been just running the fan. First, I am going to knock the coil out of it. And now I'm going to mount it on my bench with a screw. The reason I mounted it on my bench with a screw is so it can rotate freely. Now I'll tape a little piece of the end of the wire to this bolt. And I'll twist the bolt in order to build up the coil around itself. Once I'm happy with it, I'll cut it off and I'll remove the duct tape to reveal the first connection and I'll tape them both so they're easily accessible. And most of this wire is enamel, has enamel on it. So I'm going to burn the enamel off with this lighter so that I can connect to it with alligator clips. I'll use one of these good lithium batteries that I've restored recently from laptops to test it out. And unfortunately, I couldn't get much power out of it, and I'm not sure why. Here I'm trying a slightly larger power bank, which has got a 3S 2P configuration, which means two cells in parallel, and three of those packs in the series. Now I'm going to try making another magnet with a smaller bolt, hopefully condensing the field into a smaller area that I can sense easier with a nail or whatever else might be magnetic that I've got nearby. And I'm starting the same way by taping it, however this time I'm adding it to a drill so I can wind the wire more quickly. I'm careful to add it evenly along the bolt, and eventually I'm left with a nicely wired electromagnet. Again, I'll unwrap the two connections, and then I'll burn the enamel off with a lighter. I wonder if the wire that I'm using here is in a thick enough gauge and thus can't run enough current to generate a significant magnetic field. Here I'm measuring the resistance of the coil to roughly calculate in my head how much current it would be able to draw from the batteries. Third project I've been working on is my computer mouse which broke. It's a mouse that I really like and I wanted to try to fix it. I'm pretty sure that the only problem with it is a frayed cable. The other night it just fully stopped working so I thought I would open it up today and test it. The problem I've been having is that I can use the mouse and it works fine when I push the cord to one side but as soon as it pulls to the other side, the mouse stops working, implying to me that it's just some small part of the cord is broken. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a section out of the cord and resolder the USB connections inside the mouse, hopefully removing the frayed bit of the cable that's broken. So here I've just stripped the outside of the wire, and now I'm going to try to solder all of the little connections together. 
inside the mouse there was an actual connector that I could easily pull out. If your mouse didn't have this, you'd have to directly solder to the circuit board inside the mouse. All I'm doing here is reconnecting the wires within the cable. I'm going to twist them together first, all four of the different connections for the USB. There's a positive line, a ground line, and two data lines. Each of them have to be connected properly or else the mouse won't work. Now I'm adding heat shrink tubing using a lighter to shrink the tubing. And I'm adding that to each individual connection within the USB cable. So there'll be four of these. I'm using a pair of pliers to crimp down the heat shrink tubing. It's not quite the right size tubing, so unfortunately I'm going to have to crimp it with pliers rather than just allowing the heat shrink tubing to contract and add pressure to the joint. After all these connections are made, I'm going to add a large piece of heat shrink tubing over all four of the connections, and I'm going to shrink that with the lighter as well, and I'll use a pair of pliers to crimp that down as well. I'm just doing this to hold everything in place, make sure everything's fully insulated from anything else in the circuit board, and that should be most of the hard work in fixing my mouse completed. Now I'm going to go test the mouse out upstairs before attaching everything together, and it does work. So now I'm going to reconnect the connector and put the mouse back together. While I'm trying to fit everything back in, obviously I've added a giant piece of this heat shrink and soldered stuff inside. Fortunately inside mice there's a lot of extra space because there's not much electronics in them and they're a pretty large physical object. So I'm going to have to move a couple of little bits of plastic inside of it, but eventually I'm able to find a spot that I can fit everything I need to back in. Now it's just a matter of lining up everything together and snapping it all back in place and putting the screws back. I tested my mouse later and it works fine. I'm quite pleased with the results and that's what I've been up to today in my workshop. Thanks for watching.